we have engaged in quite the month, haven't we? Yes, so for those of you who are new here, and I wanted to say also welcome, welcome for spending the morning, the Sunday morning with us. We have taken this whole month as a community, and we have said, um, I am willing to look at how do I feel I am part of this infinite flow that is happening, and how, do I, how am I then willing to give from that flow to support the center? For some of you, uh, the term stewardship months will mean something, right? It will mean we have stepped into declaring how we care for that that is important to us, our spiritual community, the work that is being done here the lives that are being transformed because of this teaching and because of what happens right here in this beautiful sanctuary online as we gather together. And we have been so powerfully supported throughout this whole month by a series of um, of talks, powerful talks. Do you remember when Reverend Karen Russo started us off at the beginning of the month and she told us all, there is an invitation and you are all invited to participate, to step deeper into the flow of life. And then she did this beautiful move. Are you going to accept the invitation? <laughs> remember that? Of course, she's much taller. It looks better when she does it, you know? But, but you get it, right? And we said, yes, yes. And then we, we heard about, um, I gave a talk, Step Into Giving, and that talk was all about sometimes the invitations don't look the way we would like them to look, right? Sometimes the invitations have to be unwrapped in order to realize, oh, this is an invitation for me to be more loving, to be more kind, to understand that I'm an abundant being, and to give even in those moments when I think I have nothing to give. And then Reverend Leslie did two, I think she called them sister talks, right? It was the see the good that happens and watch the abundance flow in. Deepening into something that's happening within here is pictured out, out there. And I heard so many people uh, talk about when she said, the universe is not, um, is not giving us kudos or something when we have done something. But the universe is a mirror. Do you remember that? Yes. Right? The universe is not saying, if you do this and this and this and this and this, then I will give you that. No. The universe is saying, here is a mirror back to the dominant thoughts that are happening in your consciousness. Oh, and sometimes that's good, right? because it's all shiny and nice. <laughs> and then, sometimes, <laughs> I did not think that. No. It's not a one-for-one. One. It's not, oh, I'm going to think about a car accident and then that's going to happen. No. It is, what is the quality that is vibrating uh, dominantly in my consciousness, and that is being mirrored back. If I spend my time leaning into the allness of life, understanding that we live in an abundant universe, and even though maybe I have something going on that looks a little different than abundance, I can look beyond it and experience and my consciousness and the good will flow in. 
Oh, there's a good slide. Your life, the allness of life, beautiful. Take a moment, think about the amazing relationships you have. Think about the love that you felt, perhaps this morning when you walked in here into the sanctuary or when you turned the computer on and new vision was life. Think about the abundance that is in your life, what you have been able to do in your life, who you have inspired. Think about all the good, right? It's all represented by the yellow. And this, beloveds, is what we often do. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. yeah. That's what we do, right? There's something going on in your life, something going on in our life, because I do this too, and that's all we can see. However, we are part of the New Vision Center. We know ways of reminding ourselves and each other that there's more to life than just this one thing that happened or just this one thing that I'm, I'm really focusing on. We are a relatively small crowd, about 100 people here in the sanctuary. Oh, almost 100 online too, look at that. So I think we can have a little interaction. If you find yourself focusing just on that thing that is not going right. What could be something you could do to expand your view? Dance. Yes, dance, right? The moment the 20 of us or however many were dancing here, did we think about, ah, how am I going to pay that one bill? Or, what do I do with that? No, we just danced. What else can you do? Gratitude list. Say that again with the gratitude. gratitude list. Make a gratitude list, yes. What happens when we make a gratitude list is this, right? How oh, I'm finding myself really focused on that. And then I am making a list of all the things I'm grateful for. And oh, oh look, my friends, my family, the kiddos, the funny thing that just happened yesterday, putting feet in the ocean. And before long, we are not so focused on that black spot, but we are aware of the good that is going on in our lives. Gratitude list, very good. What else? Prayer, prayer. Because here's what happens when we say a prayer, when we are saying our affirmative five-step prayer. We are affirming that God is all there is. Right there, right there, our lens is getting much wider. If we affirm that God is all there is, I cannot just be focused on that black spot. And then in the second step, we step into it and we say, I am of that. If God is all there is, I am one in it. And then from that place, we affirm what we want to have in our lives. And then there's gratitude. And then there's the letting go. Fifth step, right? Letting it go. That really means walking away. Yes, I know it's still there, but I'm choosing to walk away. I have given it over to the divine. What else? Great. I heard two different things. Daily substantial spiritual practice. Yes. 100%. Yes. And then I heard practice forgiveness. Because let's take a look at that when we practice forgiveness, something happened, and I am right in front of that black dot. It's right here. It's right here. 
And I don't feel that I have the power to move myself away from it. And here's what forgiveness practice does. When it's like this, it literally picks us up and it moves us backwards. And we look at it and perhaps we can see, oh, I understand how this person could have done that because they were so hurt or, or whatever. Or, oh, I can understand how that misunderstanding came about. Or, oh, I can see how much I had something to do with that what I created to feel whatever the lesson is for me. That's what a forgiveness practice does. It moves us away to a broader perspective. I saw quite a few of our abundance class students here today, and for four weeks we looked at different ways of expanding our consciousness and understanding that there's a great big party going on and we are invited to it and here are the tools if we don't feel that way. So thank you for, for playing. All right, anything else? Visualization. Visualization, very good. Thank you, Marty. Visualization, well, visualization is really, oh, okay, I am noticing, I am really, really focused on that, right? Okay, I'm going to take some time and I am going to visualize myself perhaps over here, right? In the beautiful abundance of my life, in all the lovely people that are part of it, in my community, in uh, the way I feel connected to others. If the black spot is like there's so much challenge going on in our world, it is not denying that that is the truth. It is saying, and there's beauty, there's love, there's compassion, there are communities who care. Another way that I really love is leaning into the sages, leaning into those beloveds who, who have figured out some things. And one of them, of course, of course, is our beloved Dr. Ernest Holmes. And he says it this way, life is a celebration, an expression of an infinite mind, an individualization of the cosmos. That is what we are. Each and every one of us is an individualization of the cosmos. And then you might recognize the smiling face of David Smith. Now, our beloved David, he was, and I have permission to share this, all of those who are like, hopefully he knows. Um, our beloved David was facing a new chapter in his life because he was getting ready to retire. And sometime during that time, he heard a story of a young woman who was planning to walk the Camino um, with her dad. The moment dad would retire, they were going to go and fly over to France and walk those 800 kilometers, 500 miles, together. And what happened was dad passed away before retirement and they were never able to go. And when David heard that story, he knew exactly what was his to do. And he said, I'm going to walk the Camino. And that is what he's doing right now. Right? Yes. I think he's more than halfway done. Oh, and he's watching. So everybody turn around, say so much love to David. Thank you for showing us, for showing us that a simple story can be the inspiration for us to do great things. 
I was inspired by a quote by George Bernard Shaw, whom you might know. He was a young, he, well, he was a young man in 1860. <laughs> That's when he was a young man. He was born in Dublin. He turned out, uh, he turned to, uh, he, he became a prolific writer. He won the Nobel Prize. And he was a friend of Einstein. And um, he was also, uh, he was about 20 years Ernest Holmes Sr. And I don't know that those two ever met, but I read this quote by him and I was so inspired. I am going to have this framed and in my office. And I invite you either to close your eyes and just listen to these words, or if that works better for you, you can go ahead and read them with me. But here it goes. This is the true joy in life, being used for a purpose recognized by yourself as a mighty one, being a force of nature instead of a feverish, selfish little clod of ailments and grievances, complaining that the world will not devote itself for making you happy. That is when we are right there in the black spot from the other slide, right? That's when we're focused on that. No. He says, I am of the opinion that my life belongs to the whole community to do for it what I can. I love that sentence. My life belongs to the entire community, whatever that community is, to do with it what it can. And he goes on and says, I want to be thoroughly used up when I die. For the harder I work, the more I live. I rejoice in life for its own sake. Life is not a brief candle to me. It is a sort of splendid torch which I have gotten a hold of for the moment and I want to make it burn as brightly as I can and before I hand it off to the future generation. Ah, oh, such words, right? I want to have it burn brightly and then pass it on to the future generation. And beloveds, this is what we have done all month long. A hundred people have come together so far. I know there's going to be more. And have said, this is how I am going to ensure that this work that New Vision is doing is going to continue for future generation. And a hundred people have shared with us how they will support financially this center in the next year. And here is our puzzle. Bring it up. This is where I pray, don't drop it, don't drop it, don't drop it. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. So each one of these puzzle pieces represents one beloved who said, this is the amount that I am going to give in 2025 to New Vision Center so that this work can continue and can inspire future generations. And you can see there is more space. We have 20 more spaces. So if you have not yet been able to put in your pledge card, either electronically, online, or here in person, we will have Bonnie out on the, in the breezeway today. Um, I invite you to do it, and here's why we're doing this. Yes, absolutely, 100%. It supports the leadership council of this organization to plan on what is going to take place next year. Because without that information, we're kind of throwing darts in the dark, right? So we need to know that. And it has another point. It really helps each and every one of us to step into abundance in a greater way. And I'm going to invite beloved 
Reverend Karen Russo to come up. And I think there's a microphone for you. And just say a couple words. Yes, indeed, yes. So this invitation that we've been given and we've shared this month is an invitation into a greater experience of abundance. It's also an opportunity for us to be celebrating that abundance is our nature all the time. And so even beyond this beautiful give and take of the giving of a pledge card and the puzzle piece and the building it together, there's also always a give and take that's happening. And so we wanted to, in our celebration this, uh, this day, to have a symbol where everyone here can participate, everyone. So regardless of whether you are brand new or whether you um, are a committed New Vision Center giver or you are a happy visitor, everyone here and everyone online is welcome to join us now for coming forward to receive. So we want to really uh, continue the giving and the receiving. Thank you so much. Yes, I want to just clarify online, we are not going to fly all over the world and bring you those puzzle pieces. No, but if you please go onto our online concierge and there's a little link that says, I would like to receive my puzzle piece, that's what you want to do and we will mail it to you. Everybody, whether you are in here in the sanctuary or online, I invite you to close your eyes for a moment. Ah, and breathe in and connect with your own sense of abundance. And connect with how mighty you have shared that abundance. In giving, perhaps raising your, your contribution to New Vision Center, or perhaps stepping into this idea of tithing, of giving 10% of everything that comes into your life. Or perhaps you are in this very moment inspired to give a certain amount, whatever it is. Or you are reminded that last week, oh, last week, you blessed another. Perhaps it wasn't even on this campus. It was somewhere in the world. For we know wherever we give of our good, we uplift the whole because we truly are one in the one. And as we understand that this law of giving and receiving is a constant movement, we feel into our availability to receive. Ah, oh, yes, yes. I want to receive. And so I invite you, if you're in the sanctuary, to rise up and come forth if you're able to receive a gift. We're going to do this in silence. Our beloved Frank Smith is just underscoring. And I just invite you to rise up and come forth and receive one of these beautiful pieces. They're magnets. There's one for each. It says, I am one in the one. All hearts matter here at New Vision Center. We have three stations. Stay in that place of gratitude. Don't try to pick the color you really want. You can go ahead and exchange it with another afterwards. Online, know that you are in our hearts as we feel this vibration of a hundred and more and more and more people saying, I am ready to step into the flow even more powerfully. I am. I am giving and receiving in grace, acknowledging these beautiful, beautiful magnets that have been created 
our beloved Rolf Potter. Continually being aware that we each step into the flow. Beautiful. There are some here in the center too. Beautiful. And really knowing that whoever is not here today will receive the puzzle piece. Let's go ahead and take it to your heart. Unless you have a peacemaker. I don't know if that's a problem. There is a magnet. <laughs> <laughs> Hold it in your heart. Let this peace just represent the reminder that we each are at every moment invited to step in deeper into this thing called life. And so please join me in an affirmative prayer as I recognize the allness of life in this very moment. Ah, I see beautiful colors, rainbows of colors. I recognize that all is truly well, that God is, I am, we are. How grateful, how very grateful I am to know that at any moment I am invited to step into this allness of life and feel with every cell of my being that I am one in it, that I have my being in it and it has its being in me. There is no separation. And so it is from this place that I speak a word of uplifting every beloved who has placed the prayer request into our ministry of prayer. I speak a word of uplifting every beloved who has reached out to our congregant care and has requested support. I lift up in prayer every beloved who is celebrating their life to the grandest in color and I celebrate every person in between for I know wherever we find ourselves on this spiritual journey we are blessed and we are supported as we lean in to one another and into the loving arms of the divine and so it is with a grateful heart, with so much gratitude, that I simply let this play, pray, prayer go. I call it good and very good that I know it is complete. And together we know this as we say, so it is.